Okay, this is part four of the installation of the Global West coilover front suspension for a 6566 Mustang. This is the lower control arm. This half of it here kind of mimics the regular lower control arm. This half, the front strut brace. Um, it all comes as one unit here. Right here is where you'll mount the coilover um, assembly. Now this is the passenger side lower control arm right here is the steering stop you have to get that adjusted so you don't oversteer the unit and then this is the mount for the sway bar the front sway bar which actually hangs beneath the lower control arm which is different than the stock assembly so this is the strut rod piece and it comes with a one and a half inch nut on the front of it so you have to make sure you have that socket if you're installing this Now the one and a half inch nut has a lock washer and a regular washer, but there's also this bushing that centers the front assembly part of the lower control arm into the strut rod brace on your car. So you've got to make sure you have that shim to keep the strut arm part of this centered. And then this front um, strut rod it adjusts in length to make sure the lower control arm is lined up correctly and it has a heim joint right at the end for the suspension travel so as that lower control arm as you know even in the stock assembly as it goes up and down um, it actually moves forward and backward um, in this kind of triangulization with the strut rod and so the length of this strut rod is adjustable, which is nice, but it's not be, to be used to adjust your uh, caster just to get the lower control arm uh, in the correct location so that bearing in it doesn't bind. And so it has a um, double threads on it. It has left-handed threads coming out of the control arm um, into this nut and then right-handed threads on the second half of the piece. Now it's not a, a kind of a double threaded nut like you would see on a tie rod ends if you're adjusting your toe in and toe out. Um, this is actually one piece with left-handed threads that goes into the lower control arm assembly and then with right-handed threads on the second half of the unit goes on and there's a lock nut on there that also has the left-handed threads. So that's how you adjust the length uh, to make sure your lower control arm is in there correctly. Now I recommend putting in the strut rod piece of it first um, and then adjusting the length so your lower control arm lines up correctly because it'll want to bind as you go through the suspension travel. And so you got to make sure that length is just right so that um, when you would be at stock height, which for me is about here, about when the lower control arm is almost level, um, there's minimal bind on it and you can actually spin the adjuster left and right and so as you go through the travel up and down, you're still falling within um, kind of that range of free motion of the lower control arm bearing. It's never hitting any bind. And then you have to assemble the nut, uh, tighten the nut on the end of the strut rod, uh, part of the lower control arm, that one and a half inch nut. And then this is where the um, coilover assembly mounts. Which is a little tricky. It has a heim joint here, kind of a rotational bearing. And as it, it slips into this brace, um, there's a bolt that goes through that mounts it. But then there's a shim or a um, spacer that goes on either side inside that brace. So you have the washer here, which goes on the um, outside of the brace. But then you got to get this shim on the inside of the bolt as you go through that brace and then slide it through the uh, spherical bearing, uh, the kind of the heim joint of that coilover mount. As you can see, it's a little tricky uh, to get it all lined up. Like if you have one of those telescoping magnets, it might be a little bit easier to hold the spacer in place. Um, if I had it to do over again, I may have run a small rod through there just to get it all lined up and then push that on through with the larger uh, bolt for final assembly. But once you get the spacer through the one side and the bolt through the um, rotational bearing, you got to get the shim in on the other side as well because it goes on either side um, inside the actual mount. First side was tricky, 
second side a little bit easier. And that keeps your coil over assembly centered and tight in there. Uh, so those bushings, those shims are important. And once you have it in there, you can tighten it to spec. Now on the lower ball joint here, oh yeah, make sure you coil over the adjusters are facing out. That's important for adjusting your shocks. On the lower ball joint, uh, you got the castle nut here, and then you have, again, another spacer. Now this goes on top of the spindle. And that's important for alignment of your spindle. Now I'm a little paranoid, uh, so I take off the boot and I like to put a little grease on uh, the mounting surface for the lower ball joint. Because uh, if you ever had one of those frozen on, it can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, and I had that when I disassembled this. I broke two different ball joint removal tools before I finally got it off. So just a little grease, a little added insurance. And then get your rubber boot back on. And then you can throw on your spindle. Uh, here I actually have the disc and everything still on the spindle. And then don't forget your spacer. Uh, like I said, that's important and then your castle nut. And then just run it down by hand for now because we've got to get the top half of the spindle in the top ball joint. Okay, upper ball joint, no spacer required here. Goes right in. And you can probably tell I'm running Granada spindles uh, for the larger disc brakes. And they fit um, this coilover kit uh, just fine. Okay, then you can torque your ball joints uh, to spec. Don't forget your carter pin. Um, I will say I still had the brake line attached to the brake assembly, uh, but I was able to get in there. Okay, in the next video I'm going to cover uh, the shock tower brace which is the last piece of this kit. That'll be part five, and that'll wrap up the installation of the Global West coilover front suspension for the 6566 Mustang.